In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear main seal on this Chevy Silverado. Let's get into it. We're gonna disconnect the battery. You can disconnect the negative terminal using a 10 millimeter wrench. If you need to, you can take this plate out of here, but it's not necessary. You can work around it. Loosen that up. And slide that off and out of the way. Pull the dipstick for the transmission off. You want to unlock it. Then just grab it and pull it up. You disconnect the connector for the O2 sensor. Just slide this lock up. That will pull out and then pull up on the tab. Slide it out. This is the one on the driver's side. It's the inboard side of the frame. And disconnect the one that's attached to the transmission or the bracket near the transmission. Just pull the lock out. Disconnect the connector. And then we need to take the connector off. There we can use a trim tool or a screwdriver. And just slide the Slide it off. There we go. On the passenger side, you're gonna have the connectors on the outside of the frame. Just disconnect that lock. And slide the connector off. And this last one. I'll slide this connector off. Use a trim tool. You can pop the connector off or just slide. Just slide it just like that. You might have a little wire retainer right here. Just take those off. On the passenger side, the front O2 sensor, we need to remove that so that we can access the nuts. So use a 7 8 wrench or an O2 sensor socket. And pull that out. Now I'm going to use a 15 millimeter socket. We'll take the nuts off. They go on the flange right there. There's three of them on each side. out. one right here you're gonna need to disconnect in front of the flex pipe this connection right here this one's extremely rusty so you normally would use a 13 millimeter socket and take the bolt out and it should go up this one I'm just gonna have to cut it off Now it's separated right there. Slide this off. There we go. That's separated. We're going to take these nuts out. That's out of the cross member that holds the transmission support. Use a 15 millimeter socket. Out. 
Now underneath the transmission, we're going to use a transmission jack and just support the transmission. You can see that the transmission is going up a little bit where the mount is so that the weight is off of that mount. Now we're going to take that bracket down. We have to take these two bolts out on each side, the nuts and bolts using a 21 millimeter wrench on the back side and a 21 millimeter socket. Take the nuts off first. Slide the bolts out. I'm just gonna leave this one bolt in until I get the other ones out on the other side. Just temporarily, I'm gonna use a pull jack under the exhaust just to move it out of the way so I can access that bolt. nuts out and the bolts and then just grab the cross member we'll slide this bolt out and slide this one out and it slides right down now I'm just going to lower that pull jack and grab the exhaust Slide it back, slide it down, and it comes right out. Before we take the drive shaft out, we just want to mark it because when we go back together, you want it to go back the same as possible. Just using a crayon, just mark the drive shaft, the U joint, and then just on the flange, or the yoke, so that when you go back together, you're not going to cause any vibrations that weren't there before. I'm going to loosen these bolts with an 11 millimeter wrench. And take those out. I'm going to take the cap out as well. And if the bolt won't come out, that's okay. We'll take that out once the drive shaft comes out. Do the same on this one. That's out just a little bit. I can't get those, well, I can get that bolt out. But the other one's still stuck in there. We just have to move the drive shaft forward. Just to keep the caps in the same spot, I'm gonna mark the caps as well. I just get a pry bar, go in between where the U-joints are, and just pry out. Pop out. Can take these out. And you want to try to prevent popping the U joint caps out. This one's stuck in there a little bit. We just don't want to lose any of the needle bearings, so just see if you can pry that out a little more. And just be careful, you don't want it to fall on top of you. Just support the drive shaft while you're doing this. And slide the drive shaft out. and drop it down. Now we're gonna do the same with the front drive shaft. You wanna mark where it is before we take it apart. Just mark this one. And the cap. 
Now using an 11 millimeter socket, take those out. And this one you can spin. Take these out. We need to remove one of these clamps right here. You can just use a pick. Just pop this off. Just want to spread it. Sometimes you can reuse these clamps afterward if it's not messed up too much. Or you can just use a wire tie. That will work as well. We can pry this boot back. You can just use a prying tool, just a screwdriver or a trim tool. Just pop that off just like that. That's good. Now using a pry bar, just pop this out. We're gonna go up with this and then we can take the drive shaft and slide it forward and then we can tr slide it down again and pull it out. Now I'm going to take a 13 millimeter socket and take these two bolts out. Right there. There's another one right here. There's a cover right here. We need to remove that. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out. Take that out. Now the cover's loose. Slide the starter back. And then the cover will come down. And grab the starter. Slide it down, and pop that cover off. Slide that out of the way. There's a connector right there we need to remove. Just get under that with a pick or a pry bar. Just pull it up slightly. Slide that connector up and out of the way. Now we can see where this cable attaches to the solenoid. Use a 13 millimeter wrench. Get in there and just loosen that nut up. If you're having trouble accessing this, what you could do is take the tire off and also take the inner fender well out and you can access it a little easier. But it is possible to do it this way. You don't have to. Do it the other way. And pull that nut off. And you can disconnect the cable. And the starter will just slide down. And you can just pull it out. Remove this cover. You want to take these four bolts out. Use a 15 millimeter socket. Remove this cover, use a 15 millimeter socket. Pull it down. We're gonna take a 24 millimeter socket, put it on the crank bolt so that we can turn the engine. We have to get the torque converter bolts to line up so that we can take them out.
that there, and then we can take it out using a 15 millimeter socket. Take that bolt out. Loosen that up, take that bolt out. Now I'm gonna turn the crank again. Make sure you always turn it clockwise. Just go nice and slow. And there's the other bolt. Get that lined up. Same spot. And pull that one out. And rotate the motor again. the last one. Now you want to take this cover off, just use a pick. And then you can get in here with a pry bar and just pry back on the torque converter. Make sure it's separated from the flywheel. You should be able to spin it, which I can. You can see it right there. It's separated and it spins. Take a 13 millimeter socket. Take this nut off right here. I'm just going to take a pry bar, just get underneath there. Maybe we just want to push it up. If you need to, you can use a hammer. I am going to use a drain bucket underneath in case any transmission fluid comes out. And just slide that up. It came out the bottom. No fluid came out, so that's good. Now we're going to take this shield off, take these two bolts out, use a 10 millimeter socket. Now we're going to take the transmission cooler lines off. You want to pop these covers off. Just pull these back. Just using a pry bar. Pop that cover off as well. Now you can access the clips. Now I'm just going to use a pick and slide the clip off. There is special tools you can use to get these off, but just as good to use a pick. Pop this off. That's the clip that you're pulling out. You get under the clip right here, pull it out, and you can just rock it off. You want to do that on both sides. Now grab the lines, just wiggle those out. You're going to want a drain bucket underneath. You're going to lose a little bit of fluid. Slide those out. Right here, there's a clip for the transmission cooler lines. We're gonna pop these lines out of the clip so we can move them out of the way a little bit. If you need to, you can use some pliers. Just rotate the clips. Slide that out of the way. There we go. Pop those out. Get those out of the way a little bit. Just grab the dipstick, the dipstick tube, slide it down, and rotate it a little bit. So we want to get that bracket. There we go. Just get that bracket past the lines, then you twist, and it'll slide down just like that. Now we're going to take this transmission mount out, use a 15 millimeter socket, get these bolts out.
Disconnect all these connectors. There's one right here. Disconnect the motor. There's a speed sensor connector up here. Disconnect that. Slide those out of the way. Now where all these wires are attached, there is a bracket with a retainer. You want to just use a trim tool to get under that. Just take that off of the bracket, slide those wires out of the way. And then this hose, if you want, you can slide that hose out as well. Just pop the bracket off, or the, uh, the retainer holding the hose on. Or you can open up that bracket as well. Just use a pick, slide that hose out of the way. There's a breather hose in the front. You want to take that off. Just pop that off out of the way. We want to take out the transfer case nuts. Use a 15 millimeter wrench and loosen these all up. Before I take them all off, I will leave one just finger tight. There should be six of these nuts. You'll have one in the bottom, one in the top. On each side, you will have two nuts. Take those off. And take these nuts out on the side. This one took the stud out, and that's OK. For the top, I'm just going to use a smaller wrench. This one is actually custom made. I just put a bend in it. And it makes it easier to grab. But if you just have a stubby wrench, you can get on there and loosen that top nut off. And pull that nut down. And take those nuts off. And this one pulled the stud out as well. A little bracket right here, you can slide that back. All right, so there's a couple threads on here. First, I'm gonna put a drain bucket under here just in case we lose any fluid. Let's pry this out. There we go. So some fluid came out. Let it drain. Now, make sure you have an assistant when you're pulling this down. I'll pull that nut out. Oops. More fluid. Okay, we'll just come back. Now we want to disconnect the shift cable. Just get a prying tool, either a trim tool or a screwdriver. There's a clip right here. Just use a screwdriver. Get underneath there and pull that clip out. This one's pretty rusty. that out. It should look better than that. Now I take some pliers. You just want to squeeze the cable and try to wiggle it out. slides out like that. Those are the two areas where you're squeezing. There's just two little tabs on both sides. Set that aside. Using an eight millimeter socket, take this bolt out of this bracket. And pull the bracket out. Up here, we're gonna take this nut off this bracket at the top of the transmission. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter swivel socket and a long extension. Take that nut off. Pull that nut off. Now grab these lines, pull that bracket back and off the stud. Then you can access that bolt. But before we go further, there's another bracket way up top that has a 13 millimeter nut. 
I'm going to do the same. Take that off. Take that nut off. Oh, that came off. Then up top there, there's that bracket. You got to pull that bracket back. I'm going to access the bolt underneath it. Slide that off. There is a hose right here. You want to disconnect this hose as well. Some vehicles may not have this. Set that aside. And now we can access the 15 millimeter bolts and take that bolt out. All right, that's out. And pull the side ones out. This other one right here. All these are 15 millimeter. Then you got the bottom two. And make sure the transmission's supported because this is the last one that's holding it. Those are all up. Take this cover off. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take that bolt out. Slide that cover off. Then I can get in here with a pry bar, just pry the transmission back. You're just trying to get it off the dowel pin right there. You have to wiggle it. separated. I just slide the transmission back and then we'll go down a little. Just be careful, just double check, make sure everything's disconnected. This hose right here, I'm going to take this off. That should come down with the transmission. Slowly drop it down. Right here, there's a connector. Make sure you disconnect that. Just push the tab in and slide that off. And everything's disconnected from this, so it can go all the way down. Now we're going to take the flywheel off, use a 15 millimeter socket, take these bolts out. Oops. Now when I go to take the last one off, you want to make sure you hold it so that it doesn't fall. Grab it and just rock it off. It comes right down. Now removing this seal, you want to be careful. You don't want to damage any of the engine components, whether it's this cover or even the crankshaft. You don't want to get in there and scratch it while you're taking it out. They do make special tools to remove these seals. Um, another good way to do this is to use some sheet metal screws and screw into the seal and then pry it out that way. This vehicle, we actually have a couple little areas where we can pry the seal out so that we don't do any damage to anything. So we're going to start with that method and try to take this out. Just clean this off so we can see it a little better. Just brake parts cleaner. And just take a screwdriver, just get under there, give it a little tap, and just pry it out. I don't even 
have to hammer it in. Just trying to get under the seal. Scratch the crank. And the seal comes right out. There it is. And you want to make sure you didn't do any damage to the cover right here. Just wipe around. If you did gouge it up a little bit, that's okay. You just want to take the burrs off. You can always use a, a little bit of fine sandpaper, but it looks like we did okay. So we're getting ready to put the new seal on and you wanna make sure you put this on the correct way. A lot of times on the seal, it will actually say that this side out, which this one does. Sometimes this seal may also say air side and that would be referring to the side where it's not, there's no liquid you know, the inside where the oil is being contained and then the air side would be the outside. So this side out, you wanna look for that. If you can't find that on a seal, just try to, the best you can, compare them to the old seal. It's pretty obvious which way this seal goes. You can see that that is on the inside. And then this seal already has a little bit of lubricant on the seal. It's a good idea to put a little bit of silicone just to make sure that it goes on there without ripping or anything like that. So you could even put a little silicone around the crankshaft just so that it goes on nice and smooth. Just putting a little silicone lubricant just around the crank. And that's just gonna burn off, so. So when installing this, they do have special installation tools that you can use if you have one, but they're not always accessible. Do the best you can to find something that's going to fit just on the outside. You can find a plastic cap that will go. We'll line this up. This part we can just push on with our hands to that part. this cap on. Give it a light tap. To make it go uneven, I'm just going to put a block of wood and just tap it in the center. And for this vehicle, the seal has to be flush all the way around, which it is. You don't want to push it in too far. So you want to keep note before you take the old one out where that's going to sit. Now I take the flywheel or the flex plate, line this up. I'm going to make sure that hole is lined up right there. Get that good and centered. And take the bolts, get those started. You want to put a little thread lock adhesive on the bolts, some medium strength. Get those all started. Now we're going to torque these. We need to do three passes. The first pass, we're going to start right here. We're going to torque this to 15 foot-pounds. Then you're going to cross, just like torquing a wheel down, 15 foot-pounds, and then cross. And 
And that's the first pass. We're going to bump it up to 37 foot-pounds. And to prevent the flywheel from spinning, I'm just going to slide a long pick through there. We'll torque this to 37. Oops, this one and that one. And the last torque is 74 foot-pounds. See, it's going to turn a little bit. And just double check. That's good. Now we're going to put the transmission back in position. Just get everything lined up. It's looking good, just push it on. Just gonna lower this a second. Right there, that's lined up. All right, get the pins in, line those up. Make sure that's lined up on both sides. And make sure it's all the way pushed on. You never wanna use the bolts to pull the transmission in. Otherwise, you're going to break the, the pump inside the transmission. If the torque converter isn't all the way back, then you're going to break that pump. So don't do that. So now that it's flush there, we can put those bolts in. And just tighten these down finger tight. Transmissions all the way flush on both sides, so that's good. Now you can put them in and tighten those down. And the lower bolts, get those started. Then just make sure you move this bracket out of the way so that you can get this other one in. There we go, those are all started. Now we'll just tighten them all down. And tighten these down. Now with these lines, these are the fuel lines, we're going to get this bracket over that stud right there, line that up, that's good. Now we'll get the nut on there, put that nut on. down. 
Now this bracket with these hoses is going to go to the top, that center stud at the top of the transmission. Now we'll put the nut on. Get that started. Now I take the connector, line that up, lock that down. Now we're going to install the dipstick tube, go behind the transmission cooler lines. It's just going to go up there. And slide it in place. Slide it down and over that stud. The bracket slides over the stud right there. Now put the nut on, get that started. And tighten that down. Now we're gonna get these transmission lines lined up. We need to put these little hooks in where the fittings are or the retainers. Lock those in like that. Do the same on the bottom one. That's good. Make sure these are lined up correctly. Kind of lined up with the bracket down below. And lock those down. Put the lock retainer on. And same with the lower one. Push that in. Those are locked in. And put the cover on. Good. And get the bracket lined up. Lock those in place. That's good. Now we want to get the shift cable in place. Line that up. Just twist that. Slide that on. This is going to go above the bracket here. lined up over here, lock it down, it's locked on, it's good. Now I take this little locking key or lock retainer, slide that in position, lock that down. Now get this bracket lined up and put that bolt in and tighten that down. Just snug and line this plate up. Get these bolts started. And tighten these down. Just snug them down. Take this hose, this is gonna go through this bracket right here. Get that in there. And that's gonna go through there. Get that lined up. This should not be behind the bracket, it should be on top, like that. And then if you have this EVAP hose, this is gonna go up here. And it's gonna clip on over here. Not all vehicles have this like this, but and that's going to clip on up there. Just keep that out of the way. You can use some wire ties to keep it in place as well. Now 
Now you just want to clean up this area. Use a razor blade or a gasket scraper. Just clean up any excess gasket material. Make it smooth. On the transfer case, you want to take the gasket off here. Again, use a scraper or a razor blade. Just peel it off. I'm going to get this all off. Now we want to take the gasket and just line it up. And that looks good. It's only going to go one way. See, this doesn't line up, so we need to move this. That lines up right there. So this tab, for this vehicle anyway, goes right here. I'm going to raise this up. Slide that in place. And get one of the nuts on. And get that nut started. All right, that stud and nut started. And put the other nut on over here. And put the other studs and nuts on. Don't forget about the one on the top. And then we can tighten them down. Snug those up. Now if you can fit a torque wrench in here, you want to torque these nuts to 37 foot-pounds. Do the best you can. Now hook this hose up right there. Lock that in place. Now the wiring, we're going to connect all the wiring. This hose is going to go over here. It's just a breather hose. Lock that in. And that connector there. And right there. And if there's anything retaining those connectors, you want to push that back in those brackets. This one right here. Right there. That's good. Now we need to put the torque converter bolts back in. You can see where this torque converter hole where on the flex plate is a little bit flat. That's the hole that basically indexes them. So you want to turn the engine until you find that one that's a little bit flat. If it's open a little bit, then that's not the right one. So find that one and start that bolt first. Put a little thread lock adhesive on the bolt. Get that started. And you're going to have to move the torque converter, grab behind and move it until you find the hole to thread in the bolt. We can tighten this up snug. Should be good. Now torque that to 46 foot-pounds. 
going to spin the crank. So we get to the next bolt hole. Now you can see this hole is lined up perfect. Put some thread lock adhesive on the bolt. Send that in and tighten it down. And again, 46 foot pounds. And that's the last bolt. Take the starter, slide it up here. We want to get this cable lined up. Get that on first while it's still hanging. Putting a locking washer on, and then a nut. And it's a little tricky to get a torque wrench in there, but if you can, you want to torque that nut to 30 foot-pounds. Right. If you can't get a torque wrench in there, do the best you can. Now connect the connector, line that up. And lock it down. Now you can take the shield, slide that in position. And slide the starter up. And before we slide it in, we take this cover, put that cover back in place. the 10 millimeter nut into the cover and tighten it down. Snug, put the starter bolts in. And tighten these down. Now we'll torque these bolts to 37 foot pounds. Put this plate back right here. Just line that up. And take the 10 millimeter bolt. Line that up. And snug that down. Take this cover, line this up, and lock it down. Now I take the front drive shaft, go straight over here and get the back yoke into the transfer case. Slide that in, lock it down. And make sure you line the marks up. Push it in place and put the caps on, get the bolts started. Mm -hmm. 
and snug those down. Now I'm going to torque these bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Just using a pry bar to prevent it from spinning. When you're reinstalling the front drive shaft boot, you don't have to reuse the clamp. You can if it's still intact, but you can use just a wire tie and that'll be fine. Now slide the drive shaft back in place. Get the yoke lined up. In the back, make sure this is lined up with the marks that you made. It's lined up. Put the correct caps on. And you want to tighten those down. If you can get a torque wrench in there, you want to torque those to 18 foot-pounds. And you want to take the catalytic converters and line those up. Slide that in place. We have a new converter, so it looks a little different. But the procedure is the same. Line the bracket up top. That bracket lined up. And get the nuts started. On this side, you want to put a new seal right here. And slide this up. Let's hook these together. And put the nuts on. Uh, slide this in place. And then we'll tighten this down. Using a 13 millimeter socket. Just get that snug first. Once everything's in place, we'll tighten it down more. Then we're gonna tighten up the nuts. Start on the driver's side, tighten this flange down first because this is the solid flange. And those are all tight. Now we're gonna tighten this in order. Just go around, snug them all up evenly. And those are all tight. Now we'll tighten up the clamp. Use a 14 millimeter socket. Make sure that's tight. Now just adjust this so that it fits on, fits on there right. 
and tighten it down. That's good. I'm going to take the transmission mount, line this up, get those started. Tighten these down. Now take the cross member, line this up. And I'll take two of the bolts. Get that one started there. And the other one over here. And I can at least let go of it. And take the other bolts. Get all the nuts started. And tighten these down. transmission onto the support I take the two transmission mount nuts put these back get those started and tighten them down Snug. Now I take the connector, the O2 sensor, line that up, connect that, and lock it down. Then you want to slide that connector onto the retainer. It's a little bit higher. Lock that in place, and that should look like that. Then you would do the same with the other ones. Now put the shields up, get that lined up, put the bolts in. Put the shield up. down. And put the dipstick back in for the transmission. Lock it down. And connect the cable to the negative battery terminal. Get that on. And we'll tighten that down. Snug that down, just give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight. After you're done, you want to check the transmission fluid, have the vehicle running, get it up to operating temperature, pull the dipstick out, then wipe it off, and reinsert it. 
pull it out again, and you want it in between the hash marks, in between those two dots. So that's where you want the fluid level. If you need to add fluid, you're going to use a funnel and add the fluid, the correct transmission fluid right there. And lock it down. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.